Coming up, magic tricks that'll tickle your taste buds. The perfect way to poke a potato. Make the coolest snowshoes on earth. And how to turn a birthday surprise into a slithering snake. Oh, don't make me jump. Snakes are so scary. Come on, Dana, be brave. You could learn a thing or two from Jordan's amazing stuntman. I've always dreamt of being able to fly. Fraser and Lara think they can fly right now. I wonder what it really feels like to soar through the air like a bird. Hey, guys. Because you're such flying experts, how about helping me with my latest flying experiment? I need a test pilot who's incredibly brave. A true hero who laughs in the face of danger. Oh, and most importantly, someone with no fear of jumping from terrifying heights. I am, of course, talking about the one and only Stuntman. Yeah, that's me. Stuntman has told me if we build it, he will fly in it. Huh? Did I? Let's get to work, team. <laughs> thinks he's pretty clever. <laughs> Look at him up there showing off. Everybody's totally into it. Hocus Pocus, you're a jokus. <laughs> Pulling snakes out of a hat. What's so clever about that? <laughs> nice snake magic boy. But I've got a real magic trick for you. All I need is a little flour and some salt. I'll make two piles of salt here and a pile of flour over here. Aha! Here's the great magician himself now. OK, Magic Mike, I've got some magic for you. But first, call your adoring fan club. Now the real magic show can begin. I'd like you to taste this salt, please. It's not sugar, is it? And now this second pile of salt. Nothing but plain salt. And this third pile is plain sour, yes? Well, I'm going to turn that salt into sugar before your very eyes, using nothing but this flour. Now for the magic words. Mike Sidoufus. Now if you'd kindly taste this, please. And I think you'll find it's turned into sugar. Michael thinks the salt has turned into sugar, but it's really the flour that has changed. The saliva in his mouth begins the digestive process by breaking down part of the flour into a type of sugar. That's because sugar can be quickly turned into energy that the body can use right away. The magic trick works because the salt makes this flour to sugar change even faster. Yes, thank you, magic fans. Now to turn Michael into a toad. I'd watch out, Michael. Rebecca's tricks look a little dangerous. And speaking of danger, I think our amazing stuntman is about to face the most frightening challenge of his career. Our daredevil superhero stuntman is about to take to the sky. First, he'll be thrown over dead man's drop. What? Only a parachute can save him from a sticky end. I don't like the sound of that. We need something light and strong to make a shoot. Yeah, nice one, Lara. A garbage bag is perfect. We'll tie four pieces of string the same length to Stuntman. Then tie the other ends to the four corners of a garbage bag. Tie the four pieces separately to the bag. This will help Stuntman balance when he's falling. I hope you know what you're doing. OK, Lara, you launch Stuntman. Fraser and I will be the ground team. It's time for the incredible Stuntman to make his first descent. Three, two, one, go! Oh. A perfect landing! The parachute works because air is captured inside as it falls. Because the air can't escape quickly, the resistance slows down Stuntman's descent. Well done, Stuntman! Thank you very much. Is there nothing you dare not do? Uh, yes, actually. I think it's time for the ultimate test of bravery. We've seen Stuntman drop, 
Now I think you should be fired into the air. Oh, no! <laughs> Emily and I have nearly finished peeling all of these potatoes for dinner. It's taken us forever. I think it's time for a bit of fun. I'll be right back. It's time to make potato people. Mine has big googly eyes and a great big smile. You can make one too, Emily. How cute. Hello, Mr. <laughs> potato. I'm Mrs. Potato. Let's use these drinking straws for arms and legs. Emily can't seem to get the straw to poke into the potato. The end of the straw keeps bending. Mine works easily. Look. Maybe her potato is too hard. No, it feels the same as mine. Try it one more time. I see what's different. You're not putting your thumb over the end of the straw like I am. Try it again with your thumb blocking the end. That's it. Now you can do it. The secret is not the straw, but what's inside it. Air. When the girls push a straw into the potato with a thumb over the end, the air inside is compressed. That air pressure pushes outwards on the sides of the straw and makes it stronger. I bet our potato people would have never known that. <laughs> wow. Imagine getting a straw to sink right into a potato. <laughs> Speaking of sinking, Herman and Amber are about to have a sinking feeling. And I mean really sinking. Herman and I have got to take Dad's brand new tennis rackets to the sports centre for him. We've got to go carefully in this deep snow. You never know when you're going to sink in. Whoa, stuck again! It's so tiring having to pull yourself out all the time. Hey, Herman, I think I just had a brilliant idea. Come with me and I'll show you. OK, here's the plan. Put your foot on there. We're going to make Dad's tennis rackets into homemade snowshoes. I'll wrap these strong elastic bands around. That'll keep them in place. There. You do the other foot while I get on with mine. With these on our feet, we'll be able to walk across the snow much more quickly. Come on, let's go. These are just like the real thing. We're not sinking in at all anymore. I think that was pretty clever of me. Snowshoes make walking on soft snow much easier. It's because they spread the weight over your body and over a greater area. The less concentrated weight reduces the pressure on the snow so you don't sink in as easily. Dad's going to be so impressed that we've turned his new tennis rackets into snowshoes. What? Don't you think so? Party's turning out to be a real blast. All my friends are here, and I'm the lucky birthday boy. I can't believe so many came. Great, Grace finally made it. Wow, she's even brought me a present. I wonder what it is. <laughs> hey, that is one scary snake. Thank goodness it's only plastic. Hmm, but it does give me an idea for a party game. Let's make a human snake. In a line, guys. Well, it has lots of legs, but snakes don't have legs. I'd say that looks more like a human caterpillar. What do you think, snake? Hmm, how does a snake move without legs? I know, let's try something more coordinated. Put your left hands up in the air. Now put them under your legs towards the person behind you. Grab their left hand. OK, now whoever's in front, lift your left leg over the joint hands without letting go. And lie down with your legs sticking out in front of you. Everyone shuffle forward. Now keep repeating that move. Oh, boy! I thought snakes were supposed to slither. This doesn't look much like a snake at all. Oh, well, at least it's fun. 
Real snakes have hundreds of separate bone joints along their spines. It makes them very flexible. By stretching and contracting bones and muscles along their entire length, snakes make an S-shape that they use to push themselves forwards. It mightn't be much of a snake, but it's a great party game. Fantastic. I like a snake story that goes from scary to fun. Pity about Jordan's poor old stuntman, then. I think his story is about to go from fun to really, really scary. The incredible stuntman has already parachuted from Dead Man's Drop and survived. Yippee! Now it's time to test his limits again. Although he doesn't know it yet, our brave superhero is about to go riding on a rocket. First, we need to build our master blaster, Extreme Cannon. We need this old bottle as an air source. Yep, that old bicycle inner tube will make an excellent air hose. And for the barrel of our air shooter, we can use that piece of plastic pipe. The first thing we need to do is make sure the air hose is securely attached to the bottle. Wrap a piece of tape around the joint to make sure it's really airtight. Then fasten the pipe to the other end of the hose with another piece of tape. Now we loosely wrap a piece of paper around the barrel and seal up the end. This will be our rocket. Time for you to get on board, Stuntman. I want to go home. Place the air shooter on the launch pad and we're ready for blast off. I'm not ready. Stuntman, you truly are the bravest of the brave. Are you ready for your challenge? I need to use the bathroom. Three, two, one, blast off! Jumping on the bottle creates a rapid increase in air pressure, forcing air out of the bottle super fast. As the air bursts out of the nozzle at the end, Stuntman is blasted into flight. Spectacular! Stuntman, you really are a daredevil legend. What a day! Phew! For a moment I thought our amazing stuntman was facing a rather sad end. Well, he survived, but we're the ones who've come to a sad end. The end of another show. See, See you next time. time.